subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome to the print. I have with me today Dr. Mukesh Aghi. He is the president and CEO of the US India Strategic Partnership Forum. Welcome to the print, Dr. Aghi, and thank you so much for talking to us. Um, I believe it's been a very busy week for you, the past week and also the upcoming week, um, because you're having a big event coming up for the USISPF where external affairs minister S. Jay Shankar is going to also speak. But let me first begin with the big visit that we had of Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the US. Uh, which was also followed with the Quad Summit, along with the, of course, the one-on-one -on -one between uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Biden. So how did you see the visit uh, in, in terms of the perspective of the business and trade, um, and how did American businesses find it? The trip of the Prime Minister of India to US, both for bilateral and Quad Summit, was extremely successful. When you look at the relationship between President Biden and Prime Minister Modi was very positive. In fact, the meeting with Kamala Harris and Prime Minister Modi also was very, very positive. I think the sentiment enhanced that India is still a viable, strong destination for US companies to invest. It also enhanced that, uh, that uh, India is a potential partner from de-risking supply chain with China. And it also talked, you know, focused a lot on Afghan, the sun ev uh, evacuation by the Americans and impact in India. And, and we focus a lot on the uh, uh, technology transfer, climate issues and other factors. So overall the trip was very, very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw, um, at least from India, the feeling that we got after the one-on-one -on -one meeting, the bilateral meeting that happened between Prime Minister Modi and uh, President Biden. Uh, of course, apart from the strategic issues apart, which I'll come to you very soon on discussing those, but it seemed that this time India was very keen at least to put the focus back, the limelight back on the two-way trade issues. Um, so obviously now the uh, the discussion within the powers of corridor in New Delhi is maybe uh, there'll be talks uh, having both sides will again resume on a on a trade deal. I do not know if that is uh, for sure or not, but then it seems all those questions on agricultural produce, GSP is going to come back. What is your feeling on that? So I think you have to look at the priorities. Biden administration priority at the moment is healthcare and the domestic economy. Uh, making sure that people are vaccinated and pandemic is under control. So that's one of the prime uh, objective uh, Biden administration has. O on the economy side, they're focused on getting the stimulus going, infrastructure bill going to revive the infrastructure in the US, create more jobs and, and create more investment. Uh, trade is important, but I think uh, what I saw was that Trade is also important from India's side. When you look at the two-way trade uh, compared to last year, it's gone up. Uh, India's exports uh, to the US is up by almost uh, 25 plus percent. And, and US exports to India is also up. So I think the trade is going on uh, in, in a positive manner. It's important that we start discussing what are the impediments uh, which causes the de-escalation of trade itself. So I think uh, that, a session will start sometime in December, as per my knowledge goes. So you do expect some kind of momentum pick, picking up on the trade side. Okay, that's interesting because you are also saying that there will be some momentum that is again going to come up as far as trade talks are concerned. But you know what we had seen in the previous Donald Trump administration is the direct focus on having a limited. Oh followed by a larger one. But do you think under the Biden administration, and that's what we are also hearing uh, coming out from both the sides, is the fact that maybe the trade policy forum is going to be reinstated. Um, is that a possibility? And if that happens, how do you see things going on from there? So uh, our understanding is that's going to get restated uh, because I think that's a platform where both countries can sort out whatever the issues are on the trade side. You have to understand that there's a tremendous opportunity for American companies to participate on the growth story of India. And there's tremendous opportunity for Indian companies 
to participate in the US, especially on the GSP export category itself. But I think you have to uh, bring another factor, which is the quad. When you look at the quad economies, they are approximately $33 trillion. And there is a tremendous opportunity for India to explore a quad deal. It does not have to be an economic uh, FTA between the quad country, but you can focus on why, what I call is, is verticalized uh, FTA. You can focus on technology, you can focus on climate. Uh, I see a tremendous opportunity for India to leverage the quad economies while it's discussing a trade deal with the US also. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I remember having this discussion with you earlier also, having a trade deal within the Quad countries. But the question again arises, and that is something you can also, uh, you know, shed some light on Dr. Hagi is on the fact that how do you see the global supply chains are now going to work? We've had a lot of discussion on that, um, you know, during the lockdown period, um, you know, in, in both the uh, waves that India has had. Um, do you think um, those uh, promises and the commitments that we, we sort of heard from all other countries, is that really working um, to the expectation of the companies or do you think that needs to be a lot more work needs to be done, at least uh, as far as Asia is concerned, including India, the ASEAN countries, the Far East, and of course, uh, with Australia and Japan. Well, uh, Nanima, when I look at uh, the post COVID scenario, what we have learned is that you can't risk all your manufacturing in one basket. We need to de-risk that. The boardroom discussion is, is how did you de-risk your manufacturing and supply chain from China? How do you basically leverage the growing market of India itself? And uh, so we are seeing an increase in trust from US companies of furthering the investment in India. And, and when you look at year to year number, the US company's investment into India is up by almost 20%. We are also seeing that Quite a few of the U.S. companies are already moving their manufacturing into India. They're not shutting down China. I think they're saying China plus one strategy itself. Now, on the effort of U, uh, Indian government, I think the repeal of retroactive tax was a very strong message which sent to the investor community. Lowering the taxes on corporate tax on manufacturing sends a very strong message. The PLI schemes seems to be working and sending a very strong message. So we see momentum building up both sides from the investor side, from the government of India to bring in more manufacturing and, and various supply chain from China into India itself. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about plus one strategy, I remember having this discussion again uh, with you and several other business leaders um, at that time when you know COVID had really uh, started to put a question mark on China's reliability and the fact that how India needs to buckle up. But uh, as you said that India has done away with retro tax and with the PLI schemes, uh, now we have something like a national monetization pipeline. Do you think India is doing uh, taking the right steps in becoming that plus one where companies would be looking at India as well? Uh, apart, of course, I mean, keeping China aside, I mean, then there is competition with Vietnam and others. Is India doing enough? Well, there's always a room for improvement, but I have to compliment the government that they made tremendous effort trying to move in the right direction. Uh, you, know, you know, when you look at from a pure corporate tax and cost of labor in every aspect, uh, India matches China or does better in certain areas. I think where we have to improve is the cost of logistics. Uh, the average cost of logistics is almost 14% on the price of goods in India as compared to 8% in China. So I think those are the soft things which we need to improve to make India much more competitive in the global supply chain also. Mm -hmm. But will it be right to say, um, in terms of the fact that although these are in terms of trade, I would say these are still very early days of the Biden administration, but I mean, looking at the kind of discussions that Commerce Minister Piyush Goel had with USDR Catherine Tai, uh, do you think there is an appetite in the US 
to enhance trade with India or is it going to flow uh, in the normal manner as we had seen under Obama administration? There was not that kind of thrust that we saw on, uh, under the Trump administration while the entire period sort of went um, on with dealing with the trade irritants. Are we going to see that again? You know, uh, trade is a job creator. Uh, the more you export, the more jobs you create domestically. There are things India manufactures which US does not, and there are things US manufactures India does not. So there is a win-win value proposition on both sides. And I strongly believe that a effort we put in in year two, as US Biden administration settles down year one uh, to enhance trade with India. And India, you have to understand, is just not about trade. It's a strategic partnership. It is geopolitically aligned and I think uh, trade enhances that alignment. So you will see the momentum picking up as Biden administration settles down after dealing with their own health and infrastructure issues itself. Mm -hmm. So now coming to the defense trade aspect to it, which has always been uh, you know, yet another example of how good the strategic relationship is going. Um, in terms of uh, larger defense deals, do you think that is going to happen because the two plus two is going to come up in November, what we are getting to here is that there could be the focus this time is going to be on implementing those three, four foundational packs that India and US had signed. Uh, what is it that the defense companies are telling you? What is it that they want from India uh, going ahead under the Biden administration? Well, there are multiple level of discussions with multiple companies, be it manufacture in India, be it uh, for immediate needs, get uh, you know, fully made products into India uh, or help on the Navy side or on the Air Force side. Uh, so I think there are multiple level discussions going on, but every the message is very clear that India would like to become self-sufficient in, in the defense arena. It would like to partner with the U.S. companies on the defense ecosystem. And, and so I think that supply chain uh, uh, will pick up and hopefully Hopefully there'll be a PLI scheme in the defense arena for these companies to come in and set up a, a manufacturing ecosystem in the defense arena also. Mm -hmm. So if, if I can ask you in terms of the fact that Dr. Raghi, you are aware the kind of discussions that are going on right now when it comes to uh, India, US vis-a-vis -vis the AUKUS, right? Um, the enhanced uh, trilateral defense partnership between the US, UK and Australia. So now the questions are being asked that, you know, uh, look at Australia, it is now going to get high class eight uh, nuclear power submarines from the US and the US is going to transfer the nuclear technology to them first time after 1958, I believe. Uh, but what is happening to the India US nuclear deal? Uh, why is it that US is not being that kind of a partner when it comes to transfer of technology uh, as far as India is concerned? So when you look at AUKUS is a military alliances, and, and I think it's, it's a blessing for, for India because it takes the heat away from China's pointing finger that Quad is a military alliances. Uh, Quad is a basically a, a interest group of four democracies, be it on the technology, on 5G, on climate, or, or on the vaccine diplomacy. So I think the agenda of the Quad has been now clearly defined vis-a-vis -vis AUKUS itself, which is a very strong military uh, partnership. Now, in regards to the, uh, the nuclear deal or nuclear submarine deal on AUKUS, as compared to US-India nuclear deal, they're very different. Uh, I think the, uh, the India-US deal on nuclear was civilian nuclear deal. It focused on generating power. And I think uh, when you look at the, the three to five plants which US was supposed to settle uh, or uh, uh, basically uh, implement in India, that discussion have, were stalled, but they're moving forward. As you recall, there was an issue of insurance coverage on that and a few other issues. And then the company here also went uh, bankrupt and now their things are back on track. And I, I hope to see things are moving forward in, in that arena. So I don't think there's any hesitation on part of US to transfer technology. If you look at 
what's happening on, on the uh, drones itself, predator drones, which are high end uh, uh, drones used by US. The US has transferred those to India. There are discussions on F-15, F-18s. These are high-end uh, products which US uses. So I think uh, there is a much more stronger collaboration, cooperation, and sharing of uh, technology and intelligence between the two countries. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about um, now coming to investments, Dr. Raghi, uh, there is this question that is being asked again and again that, you know, while India and US has such, uh, you know, excellent strategic partnership, which is only thriving and increasing by the day, why do we not see, uh, you know, an iPhone maker like an Apple coming here and investing uh, in, in India? What is it that is stopping American companies to really go um, to that extent and really do large scale uh, production in India? Well, we are seeing uh, uh, a lot of these companies are wetting their toes in the water in India. Uh, you know, you brought the example of Apple. Apple two years ago didn't manufacture anything in India. And now when you look at it, they're exporting almost half a million iPhone 12 from India uh, to the rest of the world itself. So we've seen the momentum picking up. And I strongly believe as time goes by and as these companies experience uh, the excellent quality of workmanship which happens in India, you will see the investment picking up, manufacturing increasing uh, by these companies. Mm -hmm. So what are these companies basically telling you? Are they happy with the way things are moving? Because now we know that even that limited trade deal is also not going to take place. So are they really okay with the way things are moving in India? Or you know, it is again a long wait for them till they really see uh, major reforms happening? Well, uh, they always want uh, more changes, more improvement, but I have to compliment the government of India for the reform they brought in, in every aspect. Uh, yes, in any situation, also in the US, you have a room for improvement. So I think that consultation process continues. We keep on giving feedback uh, to the government in India that this is the area we need to focus on to bring more uh, effort. You look at PLI scheme. It started with our recommendation uh, as to build an ecosystem, providing uh, incentives to these companies. And that has been hugely successful. So I think uh, the government of India is listening. We need to give constructive, positive feedback to maintain the momentum. And I believe we'll see the momentum accelerating as time goes by. Mm -hmm. So now coming to the fact that, you know, um, also on the strategy front, do you think within Indo-Pacific, maybe uh, with the coming in also of the Blue Dot Network, do you think that is going to augment the investment climate uh, as far as Indo-Pacific countries are concerned? I, I think uh, the investment climate seems to move in favor of India uh, with all the effort India is putting on the reforms, but I think what's happening in China, where larger companies are being questioned, certain sectors are being closed, and, and the investment community, especially in the US and other part of the world, is questioning the predictability of the Chinese environment. And, and so what we are seeing is, is a little pause coming in as far as China goes. By the way, China still gets almost $125 billion for the FDI as compared to India getting around 70, 75 billion. But we are seeing uh, the investor community saying, what's next in China? Which sector they're gonna stop? So that is helping India quite a bit. So I think you will see a titanic shift taking place where you'll see India become a preferred destination as time goes by. Mm -hmm. But do you think that will happen without any um, sort of large scale reforms? No, you need to have, you know, as I said earlier, you need to have a momentum. What are those reforms that uh, you, so, you know, For example, let's look at the logistics supply chain. The cost today if in India uh, of an average good of a supply chain movement is around 18% as compared to 8% in China. You know, how do you bring that cost down? How do you bring that soft issues down uh, to be able to move goods uh, between global supply chain and back and forth to the customs itself? Or movement through one factory to another within India itself or from one state to the others. 
those are the soft factors which have to also come into play. Yes, on the policy side, uh, we can have faster decision. We can have uh, uh, you know, fewer uh, impediments. But again, this is a work in progress. Uh, we are seeing a good positive momentum. We just need to keep on giving feedback to the government to make sure that we are able to reach a global standards as far as Indian policy environment goes. Mm -hmm. Well, we recently saw an incident happening where uh, the Ford had to exit the, the India market. Do you think that comes as a setback for other American investors? No, I think it's the issue of, uh, you know, uh, the uh, trying to be competitive in the Indian market, trying to basically reach out to the Indian consumer. Indian consumer is very savvy. You look at what's happening with Suzuki, look at what's happening with Korean car makers. They've been hugely successful in, in India. So I don't think that it's an issue with policy. I think it's all about what's your product offering? How do you basically reach out to the consumer? What is your dealer network? Those are the issues which make a difference also. Mm -hmm. But do you, do you think there is a certain kind of issues or problems with the regulatory environment? And also with the fact that right now, you know, we are seeing a uh, situations and many other things, even businesses are getting concerned and questioning, uh, you know, with, with democratic values, human rights and other things. What do you have to say to that? What are American businesses telling you on that? So I think uh, the American businesses don't try to indulge in the issues of uh, human rights or, or on the labor, I mean, say, definitely on the labor rights they, they, they work on. But more important is, is, is uh, where they are impacted is on the re regulatory environment. And I think uh, when you look at the regulatory environment, it has to keep up with the change in technology. It has to keep up with the change in reforms. And I think that's where uh, still work is in progress. And that has to improve dramatically to basically make things easier for not only just US companies, but Indian companies ought to operate in a very much more efficient and, and effective manner. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. And uh, so my last question to you will be, Dr. Raghi, in terms of Atmanirbhar Bharat, I remember when this policy was rolled out and Prime Minister Modi spoke about it, there was a lot of apprehension within American businesses, whether it's a protectionist policy or not. Uh, now, after a few months have gone and we've seen the government coming out very clearly that this is not a protectionist policy, uh, are the American businesses now now sort of convinced? Um, are they okay with it? What are they telling you? Well, I think they're comfortable. Uh, they have, still have some questions, but you have to understand, it's not just Atta Never Bharat. We also have policy in the U.S. by America, and, uh, and 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 so you know, every country is trying to be self-sufficient. The lessons learned from COVID is you can't be de dependent on other regions and geographies and countries for your critical supply chain. Uh, you look at US, you know, US gets almost 40% of genetic drugs from India, but India, 70% of the API comes from China. You know, how do you basically de-risk that? Is it possible that India, US can work together in that arena on the healthcare side, on the vaccine side to reduce dependence and have a economic alignment and supply chain alignment, just like you have a geopolitical alignment I think those are the things shaping place and they're coming to place as time goes by. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And my, um, this will be my really last question, Dr. Aghi. I remember there was a trade target that was set under Obama administration of about $500 billion. Do you think the Biden administration is still thinking towards that target or we are going to hear a new target probably? Well, I do remember when we hosted the, that time, Vice President Biden, he's the one who said, the trade potential between India is 500 billion. Let's aspire for that. And I think that has not changed. Uh, I think we can take that uh, number way up there. It's a win-win value proposition, both from a US export perspective and from an India export perspective. And I think trying to drive that enhances uh, the geopolitical alignment also. So we are focused on that. We will see things moving. When you look at the first half year trade numbers, on both sides, they're up. And so we see a momentum picking up post COVID era also. Sure. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rathi. Thank you for talking to the print. You please take care. Well, thank you very much and wish you all the best. Take care. Bye. -bye.